Okay, welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at the energy stored in a magnetic field. So first we want to do it conceptually. So let's assume that we have a circuit right here. We have a battery providing some voltage to drive a current to the circuit, but there's no current yet because there's an open switch. We also have an inductor with self-inductance L. Remember L is the self-inductance or the inductance simply the size of the inductor, how much it can affect the current, and especially in opposing a change in current. And then here we have the resistance in the circuit as well to kind of keep the current down. Now, at first, nothing is happening, no current, nothing is happening, but then the switch closes. As the switch closes, the current goes from a value of zero to a final state value of the current. During that change, the inductor will begin to oppose that change. And as it's opposing the change, it will start developing a, as the current continues to increase, it will start developing magnetic field through the coil. So eventually, when we reach steady state, after a certain amount of time has gone by, you will have a magnetic field build up through the coil. Now, depending upon which way the current goes and which way I've drawn the coils, so let's say that the magnetic field goes through it like this. It depends upon the shape. So we can see that there's going to be magnetic field lines like this through the coil coil like this, and bigger and bigger as you go farther and farther out. So you'll have a magnetic field. Let me try to draw the lines like this in all directions. So you have a magnetic field through the coil, up and around the coil. So on the outside, the magnetic field will go in this direction, and on the inside, it'll go right through the coil. Now, you see that with a coil, with a solenoid, there is a magnetic field outside the coil, but the field lines are spaced much further apart. It's very weak compared to the concentrated magnetic flux inside the coil. All right, now that requires a certain amount of energy, the certain amount of energy input. So now we're trying to figure out what will be the energy stored in this magnetic field. Well, to do that, we start with our basic definition of power. Uh, power uh, produced or power um, supplied to the circuit can be written as a product of the current I times the voltage V. So I times V is a good way to, per, to calculate the power uh, given to the circuit. And then, of course, we know that the voltage across the inductor is equal to the self-inductance times the change in the current with respect to time. All right. So what we can do then is we can say, well, that means that if we replace the, the voltage inside our power equation with what the voltage will be across the inductor. Now remember, you only have voltage across the inductor if there's a change in the current. As soon as we reach steady state current, the potential, the voltage difference across the coil goes to zero. So while the current is changing, the power given to the, to the circuit, the power given to the coil, is going to be equal to I, the current, times the voltage across the current, which is L times di dt. And then we can say, well, we can take the dt and put it, put it on the other side. We can say that the power times dt is equal to the constant L times I times di. Now, what does power times dt mean? Well, remember the definition of power. There's another definition. Let me write it here. The definition of power is equal to work divided by time which is also equal to the energy divided by time. Which means, if I take the T and bring it up here, I can say that the power times the time is equal to the energy supplied. Or, if I want to do it in small increments, I can say that the power times a very small time in in increment is equal to the small amount of energy supplied to the magnetic field or to the solenoid. Okay, so I can then say that PDT can be written as DU. I can then come up here and say, therefore, the amount of energy supplied to the solenoid is equal to L times I times DI. Whoop, that's not a very good looking DI. Let me rewrite that. There we go. And so what we're going to do now is integrate both sides of the equation because I want to see all the energy supplied to build up the magnetic field. So therefore, U will be equal to the integral of all the DUs. DU, that's a capital U, which is equal to L times the integral of I times DI. Now, remember, the magnetic field will continue to grow as long as the solenoid is opposing a change in the current. So for the entire duration when the current is changing, let me show you graphically how that will happen. So if we have the current I as a function of time T, 
at t equals zero, there is no current whatsoever, then the current will increase over time, but then we'll eventually reach a steady state value where i will be equal to i final, or yeah, let's just write it i final, the final or the steady state current that we'll find in the circuit when the solenoid is no longer opposing a change because the current is no longer changing. All right? So that means that i will go from the initial state zero to the final state i final like that. All right, so now we have to integrate, which means that the total energy stored is equal to L times the integral of i di, that would be i squared divided by 2, evaluated from 0 to i final. And then you can see that when you plug in 0, you get nothing. When you plug in the upper limit, you then get that the total energy in the solenoid will be equal to 1 half times the self-inductance of the solenoid times i in the final state squared. And that will be the total energy stored inside that magnetic field. So what we can say now is, once we know that there's a steady state current, we know that we must have gone there from some initial state where the current was zero. During the process of reaching the steady state current, the magnetic field builds up in the solenoid. When it finally builds up at its final value, when we reach a steady state current, the energy stored inside the solenoid is simply equal to one half times the self-inductance times the current squared. And that's how we find the energy inside the magnetic field of the solenoid.